Don't we usually have pump up music playing right now? I'm not really a big boy band fan. Oh. Sorry. Three, two. Hi, I'm Hannah. Welcome to the bandwagon. You're supposed to cheer. <laughs> I'm Hannah Kaiser, and this is the bandwagon. <laughs> Last week, bandwagon the Reds, and that went fine for the Reds. They wore more great throwback uniforms, Puig did more cool things, and even though they're still in the last place, they had a decent little run in there. Went less great for me. Turns out Cincinnatians, Cincinnators? The Cincinnats, who saw the video, took serious offense to the fact that I lightly poked fun at their cuisine and culture, or lack thereof. Many people insisted that it seemed as though I had never been to Cincinnati. I actually had to go to a wedding there last year. They served Skyline Chili at the reception. It was bad. Uh, <laughs> I hope that my friend whose wedding that was does not watch this show. <laughs> this week we're getting around all of that mess by heading to a state where nobody respects the culture. And I'm bandwagoning the Rays! Yeah! That's all their fans! That's 100% of the fans of the Rays are in studio right now. Look at how cool these hats are! These are not actually their current hats, these are throwback hats. They're no longer the Devil Rays, which is the actual stingray Whoa, animal. Hey. They're just the Rays. <laughs> Which now means that they're no longer an animal and instead just a beam of light. They've only been in existence since 1998, and in that time they've gotten pretty good, and what's more, they've gotten good at being good. The Rays have actually managed to find market inefficiencies at a time when everyone knows how Moneyball works. They've got Birds. the- Yeah! This past weekend was the one year anniversary of the Tampa Bay Rays using an opener. Maybe you've heard of the Red Sox and the Yankees? Yes. Well, by using a relief pitcher at the beginning of the game about half of the time, the Rays have compiled a better ERA in that span than either of those teams or any other team in baseball. They have the best ERA since last May 19th, which is when Sergio Romo pitched the first inning for the first ever recorded use of an opener. Not totally true, they actually had a middle reliever guy who started one earlier in the year, but whatever. That's what we're counting as the beginning of the opener era in baseball. The Rays are most famous for using an opener, but they still have relievers have come out at the back end of the bullpen and really, really wow guys with their pitches. Jose Alvarado has a 99 mile an hour nasty fastball that got written up all over earlier this year for the insane, like, Greg Maddoxian movement. So they've been in first place until this week, past weekend in the t one of the toughest divisions in baseball in the American League East with the lowest payroll in baseball. On one hand, the lack of payroll is very cool. It means that they're smart, like a kind of underdog kind of team. On the other hand, it does mean that they're paying the reigning Cy Young award winner not enough money. Uh, that would be Blake Snell, who won the Cy Young before he even got to arbitration, and then this year had some pretty not nice words for the owners who refused to pay up. They also have the second lowest attendance in the league. A thing that I don't want to get into is like making fun of the fans who do go to the games. It's not your fault. Some of their players have started to notice the empty seats. It sucks going from you know, playing in front of a great fan base to a team with really no fan base at all. Tommy Pham is fun because he doesn't mind pissing off fans. Kevin Kiermeyer has the bluest eyes in baseball. He's not shy about showing them off, which is fine if you've got it, flaunt it. In conclusion, if you became a Rays fan right now, you could probably change the decibel of the cheers in their stadium if you went there tomorrow. You'd have to go to Tampa to be there, but it's not gonna be a rainout, there's a roof over it. And I think you bet they do free parking for anyone who carpools. Good for the environment, fan of carpooling. I'll see a fan, not a fan. Robinson Cano is base running. He failed to hustle. He failed to hustle on a ground ball. There's two schools of thought, actually, on hustling. One is that you should hustle. The second school of thought is that... <laughs> yeah! There is a contrarian take, there is a contrarian take that it's a long season when you know you're going to be out anyway. Why risk the injury? Ooh, they don't run the rest of the game. I'm a fan of trying to get to first base every time you make contact with the ball, which would make me not a fan of Robinson Cano's base running, but I'm also not a fan of people who use the word hustle to apply to some sort of intangible aspect of somebody's game and like whether or not they seem tough enough for baseball. It's baseball. Jumbotron proposals. Jumbotron proposals are fine. Wow. wow. I am a fan of Jumbotron proposals because I'm going to assume that anyone who is proposing to anybody else has taken the time, one, to figure out whether or not that person wants to marry them so they're not gonna, they're not at risk for getting publicly embarrassed, and two, knows enough about that person to understand whether or not they would appreciate a Jumbotron proposal. I trust that the person proposing to the proposee knows more about the proposee than I do. Grumpy cat, he's dead. <laughs> I think it's a she, actually. It's dead. She, <laughs> she's dead. I met Grumpy Cat. The reason Grumpy Cat looks like that is because of some sort of like, I don't know, birth defect that probably is related to the fact that I think she died at nine years old. Here's the thing about cats. They hate 
ta being taken into new environments, which is like a terrible evolutionary tactic where they just like can't and hang. <laughs> it seems like it probably put a lot of stress on Grumpy Cat, carried into young people media offices where a bunch of like BuzzFeed employees are gonna try to make it the face that you have naturally and mock you for it. I'm not a fan of Grumpy Cat because in a just world, we wouldn't know that Grumpy Cat looked like that because her owner would have just let her live a peaceful life at home. Keanu Reeves! Yeah, everybody's a fan of Keanu Reeves. That was easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Tebow. So at the start of this year, I put a lot of stock in Tim Tebow, and we shouldn't, but we could. Whole footage of me talking about how amazing Tim Tebow is going to be this year. The fact that he's even decent in AAA, that's interesting, and people should go see it now. He did just hit his first home run of the year. That is not a testament to how well he is playing. That is, in fact, a testament to how not well he is playing. He's still at AAA Syracuse because the Mets don't have a whole lot else going on. I'm a fan of Team Tebow because, and the fact that he is continuing to play baseball, a game that he is not good at, that he is too old for, that is not paying him well, the fact that he has to live in Syracuse. I'm a fan of anyone who loves baseball that much. I wouldn't. I don't even love baseball that much. This week, we are treated to the latest iteration in a long tradition of men arbitrating whether women are fan enough to be at a baseball game. But if I may harp for one minute on the overarching point of this entire show, the entire idea of a hierarchy of fandom is largely subjective and likely sexist. Taking a picture of yourself at a stadium, which tends to be what the older men most frequently mock younger women for doing, in no way undermines the baseball viewing experience. There is literally nothing morally superior about keeping score for going selfies, and you're delusional if you pretend that anyone who goes to a live sporting event these days isn't trying to come away with it with a free photo souvenir. Which leads me to believe that the real problem that the mostly dudes have with mostly women taking pictures of themselves at the ballpark is a lack of shame that the women appear to be exhibiting. By co being comfortable posing for their phones in a public space, young women are flaunting a lack of self-consciousness that apparently flouts some sort of unwritten rule. And you know how baseball feels about those. So this week, my humble proposal to fix baseball is something you can enact right now. No need to run it up to Manfred or even your local baseball owner. When you see someone at a game enjoying the experience, just leave them the alone. Yeah. Yeah. This week we are bandwagoning the Rays because they really need our help just to get a little bit better and move back into first place above the Yankees. And who doesn't love to hate on the Yankees? Don't watch two episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> I am a fan of stadium proposals. I don't see what the big deal is, why you're trying to hate on somebody else's big day. I'm a fan of Tim Tebow. I want him to do well, but he's not going to. And rest in peace, Grumpy Cat. This is a really depressing episode. You're like, this episode wasn't depressing at all. Anyway, talk about the dead cat whose life was cut short by fame. <laughs> and we're out. <laughs> and we're out.